this video we're going to do a visual inspection on an oil filter assembly so we're going to cut open the oil filter we're going to pull the element out we're going to do a visual inspection and we'll also use a magnetic magnetic tool some items to have for this you will need your oil filter to be suspect oil filter a oil filter cut can cutter uh, you can get these a couple different varieties this particular one is a bb products oil filter can cutter a magnet to check for ferromagnetic particles a cutting tool for the element itself some towels couple rubber gloves uh, you'll need a vise access to a vise to hold the filter while we cut it and then i like to use these are like dog piddle pads you can get them in the uh pet aisle of your local grocery store um, they're plastic lined but they got an absorbent i like to lay the filter out on this uh, this will absorb oil that comes out of the pleats and not wick through to the back side so you can work on a table and your your table underneath isn't an oily mess afterwards so it's a piddle pad i like to do the inspection out here it'll absorb the oil from the filter pleat your oil filter to start Drain your oil filter. This one has 10 hours. This particular engine is 10 hour, about 12 hours since uh, reassembly. So we're currently trending to see, or look to see a trends of metal going down. Um, hopefully we don't see any shavings. If we do, it's very little compared to the last oil sample, but we'll do the visual inspection just like it's any regular filter. We'll cut it open using this. Uh, we want to avoid using hacksaws and things like that to cut open the oil filter. We don't want to impart material from the can into our filter element in any way where you might be surprised by the amount of material in it. So this type of cutter goes around that. We'll put this in a vise. I'll show you how to do that. And then it's kind of like a pipe cutter. Each turn, you'll turn this a little bit and it moves the wheel in a little bit further and it cuts it a little deeper each time we turn that around that. So I'll show you that. The magnet we'll use to check for the ferromatic particles and then we'll cut it out using that knife. We also want to have a set of pliers handy. There's a little tab in here inside the pleats that we'll need to pull out using this. I'll show you that when we use it. So next thing we'll be to set this up in a vise. It's the easiest way, I think. Take the nut that's on the filter, tighten that into hold. Hold that, hold the filter good. Install your filter cutter. You probably will need to loosen this to allow it to slip over the filter. So place that over that. Tighten your adjustment screw. That just brings that cutting wheel down to the filter right there. So you don't want to make it super tight at first, just put a little bit of pressure on it. Make sure that's seated well and it, we just start turning this. Each time we go around, I'll put a, a, a little bit more tension on the screw or the adjuster knob. And eventually it'll just cut the can open. If we do this job using a hacksaw, the hacksaw motion will put a lot of material into that and then you may be alarmed by the amount of material that's in your filter. So each turn, just turn a little bit. And eventually it'll cut all the way through. And then you can peel it off. Now at this point I like to put on some gloves just because this stuff gets kind of oily and I don't like to have to wash my hands 500 times. So let's put on some gloves and we'll pull this out. All right, so before we did this, I let it drain in a, fil in a, a funnel into a can for a while. So we're gonna pull the element out of here. Uh, we can do a visual inspection down there if there's a lot of contaminants on that side. You know, it could be give you a precursor or a preview of what to find in the filter element. As we turn the element around, you'll see this little metal band here. This is what clasps the two ends of the paper element. So we're going to use our pliers to pull that out. And then we're going to take our razor knife and we're going to cut all the way around the edge on each side uh, with the that knife I have. It takes about two passes, so we'll cut twice on each side 
and then we'll peel the element out and we'll spread it out over here on this absorbent pad and then we'll do the inspection on the pleats so i'm gonna set the camera down now so you can watch this part right, so we can move this out of the way there's nothing really on here we need this can just be thrown away i'll wipe my tool up Put that back in the box. Done with that. This can be discarded. Alright, so first thing we're gonna do is pull off this little tab right there. Just take your pliers. It's just a little piece of spring steel. You can just grab it with your pliers and remove that so that you can discard that. I like to pull that out before cutting the filter. I don't want to run my knife into that and dull the knife. This process dulls the blades pretty easily, so you may only get one or two two cuttings out of this. This particular filter also has, um, this is a Tempest, and on the top end it has a magnet, so it, it, it does a little better job than the, the Champion filters that don't have that magnet. So you can look at that magnet there and inspect this for any large particulates. If you don't see anything there that's worth worthwhile, we'll still run the filter th or the magnet through the filter pleats once we open it. You can also look at that, the back side of that for it, contaminants as well, because it tends to gravitate towards that. So give that a good inspection. All right, so let's trim the filter out of here. So once we've cut that a couple passes, now we can peel this the filter element away from the, the frame for the filter. So we want to do our best to try and not destroy this because we want to inspect the pleats. So just peel it out and get it started. And then we can see the backing there. So the, the contaminants all be on this side. So I'll grab this and just kind of work that paper element out of the just peel out the accordion. Pull the element away and I get oil all over your hands. Reason we use the gloves, right? Okay, so here we got the, the can. This part, you can inspect that there with the magnet and you can discard the rest once you're happy with that. Now we're gonna take the pleats and we're gonna move it over to our pad here. We're just gonna spread it out. 
Now one side's the unfiltered side. And then we, we can spread this out. So if you, when you do this right now, you'll see that there's a lot of oil inside the filter assembly. I'm gonna turn the camera here. So we got this spread out and there's a lot of residual oil on this. You can let this drain on this pad cause that's an absorbent pad and it won't go through the backside cause it's plastic lined. You know, if you want to let that sit on there for an hour or a couple hours, that'll, that'll wick down into this and then you can get a, a little drier version here. Uh, but this one, we're just going to do a visual. So we're going to split, splay out the, the pleats. And what are we looking for? Well, this engine's got two hours, so there's, there's still a little bit of breaking on some components. Or it's got 10 hours on it. So we may see little shavings like this. So that one is fairly large. And I know it's aluminum. So I can ch take my magnet... And if it was a steel component, that would stick to the magnet. So if I run that over that part, it's, it's not sticking to the magnet, so it's not steel. So it's, chances are it's aluminum. Now this particular engine, it's, it's got 10 hours since reassembly. So we are going to expect a little bit of material in there. If something like this was extremely plentiful in here, 12 or 40 pieces Lycoming has a service instruction that tells you to monitor this through frequent oil filter changes now on this particular engine i did a, a filter change at two hours and i counted 12 of these shavings so initially at that first oil change you're you're a little bit excited not necessarily in a good way because you see shavings there's another one in there. But so on this one, after 10 hours, I only see two of these shavings. On the first oil change with four hours, there was a 12 of them. So after 10 hours, the quantity of these shavings has gone from 12 and four hours of use to two and 10 hours of use. So the trend of that is going down. On um, these particular oil changes, I've run the oil drain through a filter and have found no shavings in the suction screen or the oil itself. So we, we know it's just it's coming from the engine on a small scale. So what other things are we looking for? Anything that's in here, you might see, since it's a fresh engine, if there's a lot of items in here that look like pepper, like a pepper grill, if you can grab them through your fingers and smash them up where there's nothing that could just be carbon or lead deposits that have broken down and been caught by the filter. If they don't break down with your fingers, um, they may be hard. You might check to make sure that they're not magnetic. If they're magnetic, that could be um, parts from something magnetic in your engine, something more serious like a cam or crankshaft. So we'll take a magnet and we'll go through each pleat looking for things that stick to the magnet. Ideally, when we get done with this whole filter inspection, this will be dry or have no stuff stuck to it. And then visually, each of these pleats are fairly clean. Now, remember that the engine does wear during its life, so you're gonna see occasional pieces in here. Just because you see something in here doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the world. We just want to keep track of this stuff. If something's failing in the engine, you will always see an increase in material as we do more filter runs. So as things wear and wear more excessively, that will start being caught in the filter. So something like this shaving here, I'm not concerned about it because the trend on that has been going down since we initially put the engine together. And this pleat after 10 hours, there's only two of those little shavings. So that is clearly going downward. If those were increasing, this time I pulled it and there's 40 of those pieces, that would be telling us something that is alarming and we should really investigate more seriously. So just do an inspection of all those pleats. You might see little pieces of shiny here and there. Obviously, if there's a lot of material in there, you, it's, it's caused for concern and further investigation. If any time, if you're worried about something like this, you can always package this up and send it to an oil analysis company, and they'll give you more specific details of what the, the filings are inside the filter assembly. So that's a, a basic filter inspection. This one looks pretty good. We're happy with the way it's trending. Um, on a sunny day, you can also take this outside and hold it in the sunlight. If there's a lot of sparkly stuff there in the sunlight, you know you got a lot of material. So 
Okay, that's a, a basic filter inspection. You're looking for small particles. If they're magnetic and there's lots of them, that's a bad thing. Uh, if there's a lot of particulates on the Tempest filter magnet, that could tell you that something serious is really coming apart. Usually these shiny silver things in here are aluminum. So I'm pretty sure that's coming out of the uh, piston pin. I put a new piston pin in, that's breaking in. I also put a new oil pump, so it's also possible that could have come from the gears breaking into the oil pump assembly. But that is trending downward, like I said, after 10 hours, there's only two of those shavings. So we are clearly going in the correct direction. So that's great. All right, that's an oil filter.